In these slides, I'm going to talk about Euler's method, which is a simple and easy to implement and not particularly accurate method for numerical solution of ordinary differential equations. We're going to focus on first order ordinary differential equations with an initial condition, also known as initial value problems. The schematic on the left represents the solution y of t, which is unknown to us. We know on the right hand side the differential equation form dy dt is some function of t and y. We're going to retain the more general representation here where f of t and y is some unspecified function and develop a method that can solve this differential equation given the initial condition y of t equal to zero and then use that method for any number of f of t and y functions. Because we can evaluate f at any t and y, we can calculate the slope anywhere we have t and y values. The first set of t and y values are the initial condition, and the blue line here shows the slope at that initial condition extrapolated forward. So we're going to use information about the slope and predict in the future some value of y at another t. We're going to use discrete steps of size h. h is called the step size, or sometimes the time step. Notice the nomenclature on the right. y of t is the exact solution. y of tj is the exact solution evaluated at one of the discrete tj values. Here we show j equal to 1. Without being specific at this point, we're going to suppose we can find a method that will allow us to make a prediction of y sub 1, which is going to be our numerical solution at t sub 1. The red dashed line suggests uh, the shape of that approximate function, but we don't know it. We just are going to start with a discrete value, say t0 and y0, and we're going to use the slope at t0, y0, and perhaps at other points in the between the t0 and t1 to predict where the numerical solution should be. So the red dash line suggests the shape of the function, but we don't know it. We only know discrete values. Once we have the solution at t1, we simply repeat the process. We have an approximate slope now at t1, y1. It's approximate because we don't know what the value of y1 really is. y1 is our numerical solution. And since it's not equal to y at t1, the exact solution, we can imagine that our slope will be a little bit different from the true slope. We can repeat this process for a number of time steps. h is the time step from t0 to t1, t1 to t2, t2 to t3, etc. Each time we advance the solution one time step using the slope value at the previous value of time, and we advance with a formula that gives us our function at the next time step. We've described a general purpose process. Now we're going to develop Euler's method, which is very simple. We start with a Taylor series expansion about the known value y of t0. The y of t is the y of t0 plus a first derivative term plus a second derivative term, etc. We're going to neglect the higher order terms. We'll retain that first derivative. And since we have a formula for computing f at t0, y0, we can simply use that in lieu of the first derivative. So our approximation y of t near y of t0 is t minus t0 times the f value at t0, y0. We're going to use h instead of f in the last line to simplify the nomenclature. So let's, let's use this technique for a series of time steps. Again, h is the time step which we're going to assume to be uniform. We have initial conditions y of we have initial condition y at t0, and we compute y1 is y0 plus hf of t0, y0. That gives us a value at the future time, y1. Given the value of y1, we can use it in our f of ty function to predict the slope at y1 and advance our solution to y2. And we repeat this an arbitrary number of times, with j being an index of the time step now we're going to shift the time step index by one. It doesn't matter as long as we keep the relative positions of y, y minus one and yj plus one in mind. 
So our, the box here gives us the formula for Euler's method. The right-hand side is considered to be known at any time step. Let's do this by hand. We have this differential equation, d by dt equals t minus 2y, and the initial condition y of 0 equal to 1. You can verify that this is the solution by substituting y into the right-hand side and left-hand side and see if they're equal. And then you can also evaluate the initial condition to make sure that that is equal to 1. I'm going to build up a table here. The first row is the initial condition. And the columns are j, the, the index of the time, tj, the time at that index, f is the slope, and the big wide column in the middle is the formula for Euler's method that is used to advance our solution. Since we know the exact solution, we can compute it and compare our numerical solution to it via subtraction to get a absolute error. We're going to use a time step of h equal 0.2 and advance the solution by one step. We simply evaluate f of tjyj, which is now based on the initial condition. We advance the solution and get y1, the bottom row here, of 0 0.6, which has an error of minus 0 0.0879. We can repeat this for two more time steps. It's a bit tedious to do by hand, but there's no mystery in how these values are computed. Now let's consider implementing Euler's method in MATLAB. And the first thing we need to do is recognize that MATLAB has arrays that have indexes that start at 1, not 0. Therefore, we need to slightly reinterpret our formulas for Euler's method so that the initial condition corresponds to the MATLAB variable t1. So if t is an array, then t1 is the first element of that array, and similarly y is 1. It's not hard, but it takes a constant shift. So why did we use t0, y0? Well, first of all, it's convention that the subscript 0 is the initial condition. Second, using t0 reinforces the idea that that time is at 0. Here's a simple formula put into MATLAB syntax. Uh, we notice that the bottom is a simple loop, and all the work above it sets up the variables that can be used in the loop. So we specify our step size h. Tn is a stopping time. y0 is an initial condition. The t vector is created with colon notation, and we create a column vector by appending this transpose operator. Uh, we create n as a variable that will help us refer to the last element in our arrays, and we pre-allocate y so that the execution, the uh, calculations are more efficient, and MATLAB doesn't have to keep expanding the y vector each time through the loop. And the loop looks just exactly like our formula, y at j minus 1 is h times f of tj yj. Recall that we're solving an exact differential equation, t minus 2y as the f of y. Now, we also need to notice that this formula, these formulas are very simple. This is uh, not a general purpose code. And the limitation, the first limitation we notice is that the loop contains statements that only work for a particular f of y. So we're going to use a slightly more complicated, but not much, a very slightly more complicated formulas, MATLAB formulas, and create a more general purpose method that uses Euler. We're going to create a more general purpose function that uses Euler's method, and the right-hand side function will be specified as a handle or an external end file. Here it is. Here's an implementation of Euler's method. Notice that the top block contains comment statements that describe the functioning. These are important because they allow us to document our code and avoid having to dig through and wonder what it does. So as before, we create the t vector. We create a y vector from, to, for efficiency by pre-allocating it. And then we iterate. Notice that the last part of the loop statement is h times f eval of diffie q. That indirect function evaluation, f eval, allows diffie q to be a variable, so we can pass in either the name of a function or a handle to the function. That's it. That's all there is to it.